welcome to Overdrive. I'm Shireen Bhana. This was a very big week for Indian auto enthusiasts and that's because the world's fastest and most expensive road-going hypercar, the Bugatti Veyron, was officially launched in India. Now, the Bugatti has a very special place in Team Overdrive's heart because remember, on our 25th episode, we actually sent down Sirish and our producer Sandeep to spend a day at the Bugatti factory with the engineers who put this marvellous piece of work together. So when we got a second opportunity to do that, Sirish wasn't going to send anybody else. Take a look. Some experiences stay with you for a lifetime. The first kiss, hitting the ton for the first time, doing 300 kilometers an hour in the Bugatti Veyron. I remember that day in perfect technical clarity walking around the grounds of the Bugatti facility at Molsheim. Running my finger over the most expensive car in the world. Soaking in the heady aroma of money. Thanking the Lord for the privilege of driving the Veyron. A privilege accorded to the very few. And then, holding on for dear life as the needle swung past 300 kilometers an hour. It was a life-affirming moment. And now, I'm back at Bugatti's Atelier for the second time in three years. Not to get nostalgic though, I'm here to finally talk about the car I got a glimpse of the last time I was here, but was warned on threat of serious physical pain to keep absolutely mum about. So how do you make the fastest, most exclusive and the most expensive road car in the world even more expensive? Well, you take the roof off and that increases the price from an already eye-watering $1.75 million to $2.25 million. In Indian rupees, that's 17.5 crores for the standard Veyron Coupe to almost 23 crore rupees for this, the grand spot. And that's not including registration or insurance. Which is a shocking, eye-watering and frightening amount of money. And for that, well, what you get is, actually, what you don't get is a roof. Now, because there's no roof, the structure is obviously a little weaker. So to compensate for that, the doors are now carbon instead of aluminum on the coupe. It's got carbon fiber reinforcements. The A pillar is carbon. The rollover hoops that pop up from behind, that is carbon. The front crash structure has been completely redesigned. So a significant amount of engineering has gone into making the grand spot. And all that has resulted in a weight increase, around 101 kilos. But when you have an engine like this at the back, with 1,001 PS of power, 101 kilos really doesn't make much of a difference. Now the car you see here is actually going to someone who dished out half the GDP of Africa. Which is why we aren't going to put our grubby paws on it. Instead, Bugatti's test driver, Pierre-Henri Raphanel, is on his way here with another grand spot for me to test. Oh my god, it's a Veyron and it's a Veyron that sounds even better. All that whooshing and hissing from the wastegate, it just sounds phenomenal. The numbers, everybody knows the numbers. 1001 PS of power, 1250 Newton meters of torque, four wheel drive, four turbochargers, 0 to 100 in 2.5 seconds. 0 to 200 in 6.7 seconds 0 to 300 in 16.7 seconds 
And if that's not mind-boggling enough, here are two of my favorite bits of Veyron trivia. At the top speed of 407 kilometers an hour, you will run the fuel in 12 minutes. Which is actually a good thing, since at top speed, the specially designed Michelin's, the widest tires on any road car, last just 15 minutes. Now, we aren't going to put any of that to test today. But what I will be doing is rearranging my internal organs as I flex my right foot. And the acceleration is vicious. But the braking, my god, the braking is even more so. 0 to 100 takes 2.5 seconds, but 100 to 0 takes 2.3 seconds. 400 millimeter carbon ceramic brakes on all four corners. Unreal. But the thing that keeps hitting you, keeps hitting you over and over again is this noise. It's unlike any other automobile. Lift off at full throttle and the waist gets dumped full pressure in a ear-shattering crash. Boom, tsh, boom, tsh. It's Metallica live at full stadium volume, traveling at half the speed of sound. And it's not just about straight line acceleration. In the corner, she handles, she actually handles well. It weighs around 1.8 tons, but she's still nimble. She's still chuckable. Though anyone who wants to chuck a grand spot around seriously needs examining in the head. Forget totaling it. I, for one, couldn't even think of putting a tiny little scratch on the car. But the car is so bloody good. The steering, so communicative. The grip, so tenacious. And the handling, so light, delectable and involving. It lulls you into going for it like a rally driver in his Evo. That's four-wheel drive. The grip, the confidence. Utterly, properly mental. The best car in the world, definitely. So has taking the roof off the fastest, the most exclusive and the most expensive automobile in the world made it even better? Well, who can say really? Who can put a logic to a 23 crore rupee price tag? Now think about this. If you are confused between a Veyron and a Grand Sport, the premium that you pay for a Grand Sport over a Veyron, for that premium alone, you can buy six Porsche Panameras. The Grand Sport is that expensive. So it defies all logic. But I think in that lies the logic. Because this is not just any other automobile. It is a work of art. A vehicle like this will never ever be built again, at least not with an internal combustion engine. And now, if you have 23 crore rupees burning a hole in your bank account, you can buy a Grand Sport or even a Veyron in India. It is officially launched in India. And the person who can afford one and buys one in India and drives it the way it is meant to be driven, man, that person is a lucky sod indeed.